Hey there, welcome back to our series on measures of dispersion. Today I'm going to show you how to compute and interpret the quartile deviation for grouped data. Quartile deviation, or what is commonly called a semi interquartile range, is a measure of dispersion that quantifies the spread of data around the median. Now let us consider this data of the ages of patients admitted to the emergency unit of a hospital within the last week. So what is the quartile deviation for this data? Here we see the age of patients in groups, right? And each age group has its corresponding frequency. So for example, the first group of patients are those in the 10 to 19 age group, and there are six patients. The second group with ages between 20 to 29, and there are 12 patients in this group. So this data is a group distribution, and we can see that there are six groups or six classes. Awesome. So let's first rearrange the table into an easy to understand format. This way, if we want to modify the table, we can easily add a new column or we can easily do any kind of modifications we want. Now, the quartile deviation is given by the formula QD is equal to Q3 minus Q1 all divided by 2, where Q1 and Q3 are the first and third quartiles respectively. So with this, it is obvious that we'll need to find the quartiles before we can get to calculate the quartile deviation using this formula. I have made an extensive video on how to determine the quartiles for continuous and discrete series data and you can find that link in the card above or in the description of this video. Alright, the first thing to do is to compute the class boundaries. The class boundary is the midpoint between one class and the next. To find the class boundary, we will subtract the upper class limit or the first class from the lower class limit of the next class and divide by 2. The upper class limit of the first class is 19 and the lower class limit of the next class as we can see here is 20. So 20 minus 19 is 1 and we'll divide this by 2. So 1 divided by 2 will give us 0 0.5. So the class boundaries are 0 0.5 points from each of these class limits. So we can simply subtract 0 0.5 from the lower class limits and add 0 0.5 to all the upper class limits. And this is what we will get. So for the first class we have 10 minus 0 0.5 which is 9.5 and then 19 plus 0 0.5 which is 19.5 this will give us a class boundary of 9.5 to 19.5 awesome so we'll do the same thing for all the other classes and we'll get these figures then next we calculate the cumulative frequencies and if we remember the cumulative frequency for a particular class is the sum of all the frequencies leading up to that class plus the frequency of that class so for this first class, we will have a cumulative frequency of 6 since there are no frequencies leading up to this class and the frequency of this class is just 6. Now um, for the cumulative frequency of the second class, all the frequencies leading up to this class is just 6, that's the frequency of the preceding class, plus the frequency of this second class which is 12, so we'll have 18. For the third class, this will be 6 plus 12 plus 25 and that will give us 43 and if we continue like this we will have 61 and then 75 and lastly 80. Awesome. Now remember as a check the cumulative frequency of the last class should be the same as the total frequency and this will give us an assurance that we are on the right path, right? Now with this table in place we can now find the quartiles. Let's start with the first quartile, Q1, shall we? Q1 for group data is given by the formula L plus KN minus CF all over F in brackets multiplied by W where L is the lower class boundary of the quartile class and this KN here is the quartile position. CF is the cumulative frequency of the preceding class and F is the frequency of the quartile class. And then finally, W is the width of the quartile class. And to do this, we will look for the quartile position. Remember, quartiles divide a data set into four equal parts. So, and since there are 80 individuals in this data, we will need to find at what position between the first person and the 80th person that the first quartile is located. All right, so starting with Kn, K is equal to I divided by 4 for quartiles, where I is the quartile number. And so for Q1, I is going to be equal to 1. Alright, so here K is 1 over 4 for the first quartile. Now N is the number of observations, or in our case, the number of patients, which is 80. So KN 
is 1 over 4 multiplied by 80 and this will give us 20. So our quartile position for the first quartile is at the 20th individual. Now to find the quartile class, we just need to find the class with the cumulative frequency that is the same or just above the quartile position. And that will be our quartile class. Now if you want to know the rationale behind this, please watch this video with the link in the card above. So here, the cumulative frequency that is just above 20 is 43. So our quartile class is the class of 30 to 39. Awesome. This means that the 20th individual has an age that falls within this class. And that's the age that we're trying to estimate. Don't forget, this is group data, right? And we don't have the individual ages of the patients. Now, if we had the individual ages of the patients, then we'll just pick the age of the 20th individual and that will be our first quartile. But what we have is group data. So for L, L which is the lower boundary of the quartile class, and this is 29.5. Awesome. And you can see it here, right? F which is the frequency of the quartile class is 25. CF is the cumulative frequency of the class preceding the quartile class. Please don't forget is preceding the quartile class, not the quartile class, the class preceding the quartile class. That's this class here. Then and that's the 20 to 29 class. So the cumulative frequency is 18. And lastly, W is the width of the class interval, which is obtained by subtracting the upper class limit of one class from the upper class limit of the next class. So we can simply say 39 minus 29 equals 10. So our class width is 10. So our L is 29.5 plus KN, which is 20 minus CF, which is 18 divided by f which is 25 and now multiplied by 10 so we have 29.5 plus 2 over 25 times 10 so we'll say 29.5 plus 20 over 25 so 29.5 plus 0 0.8 so our q1 is equal to 30.3 awesome now let's quickly compute the third quartile Q3. K here, as usual, is I divided by 4. But for the third quartile, I is going to be 3, right? So K will be 3 over 4. And N is 80. So KN will be 3 over 4 multiplied by 80. And that will give us 60. So our quartile position for the third quartile is at the 60th individual. So like we did for Q1, to find the quartile class, we just need to find the class with the cumulative frequency that is the same or just above the quartile position. And that will be our quartile class. So here, the cumulative frequency that is just above 60, right? And that is 61. Yeah, that's it here. Awesome. So our quartile class is the class of 40 to 49. This means that the 60th individual has an age that falls within this class. So L, which is the lower boundary of the quartile class, is 39.5. You can see it here. F, which is the frequency of the quartile class, and this is 18. CF is the cumulative frequency of the class preceding the quartile class. Remember, please don't forget. And that's this class here, the 30 to 39 class. And that's 43. And lastly, W. The width of the class interval, which is obtained by subtracting the upper class limit of one class from the upper class limit of the next class. So we can simply say 49 minus 39 equals 10. So our class width is 10. Applying the general quantile formula like we did for Q1, our L is 39.5 plus Kn, which is 60, minus Cf, which is 43 divided by f, that's 18, and now multiplied by 10. So we'll have um, 39.5 plus 0 0.94 in bracket times 10. And then that will be 39.5 plus 9.4. This equals 48.9. So our Q3 is equal to 48.9 years. So we have established that our Q1 is 30.3 years and our Q3 is 48.9 years. Now let's find the quartile deviation. Okay, remember the formula QD is equal to third quartile 
minus the first quartile divided by 2. So our quartile division is equal to 48.9 minus 30.3 divided by 2. And our quartile division is 9.3 years. Easy peasy. Now, what does this mean? What does a quartile division of 9.3 mean in the context of our data? This simply means that 50% of the patients admitted in the hospital have ages within 9.3 years of the median. In other words, half of the patients are between the median value minus 9.3 years and the median value plus 9.3 years. So if our median, for example, was 40 years, then with a quartile division of 9.3 years, it means that half of our patients were within the ages of 40 minus 9.3 years and 40 plus 9.3 years. So it means that half of our patients were between 30.7 years to 49.3 years. Awesome. So remember, we started by saying quartile deviation or semi-interquartile range is a measure of dispersion that quantifies the spread of the data around the median. And it is represented by this formula. Then we had this data of the ages of patients admitted to a hospital within the last week. And we tried to find the quartile deviation. And we did this by completing the table with the boundaries and the cumulative frequencies. Then we went ahead and calculated the first and the third quartiles using this formula. And finally, we arrived at a quartile deviation of 9.3 years, which simply means that 50% of the patients admitted to the hospital have ages within 9.3 years of the median. Now we know how to compute the quartile deviation for group data and we are good to go. Okie dokie, adachoki. Now if you've gained value with this video, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues to help them. And if you like this video and you want to see more awesome videos like this in future, then consider subscribing to this channel and hit on the notification bell icon so you'll be notified of my future videos. In my next video, God willing, we will be discussing on another interesting measure of dispersion called the variance and as always thanks for watching